Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. Today we will discuss the question partition equals subset sum. In this question we are given an array nums containing only positive integers and we need to find if the array can be partitioned into two subsets such that the sum of the elements in both subsets is equal. In the first example as we can see it is possible to partition the array into two parts and while in the second example it is not possible. This problem is similar to classic knapsack problem. We need to divide the array into two halves. So in order to divide the array into two halves, the basic approach is finding a sum of the whole array. Now if the sum comes out to be an odd number then it is not possible to divide the array into two halves. So we directly return zero in that case. While if the sum is even, we need to find if there exists a subset into this array which has the sum equals to this particular sum by two. So these are the basic conditions that we need to take care in every scenario. So we'll write those conditions first. So we'll have a sum variable and we'll take the sum of all the values into this. Now, if this sum is an odd value, we simply return false. Now we need to find the subset whose sum is equals to this sum which is the total sum by 2. So we need to apply our logic over here. The initial brute force approach can be we can use DFS in order to check if any set exists that has a sum equals to this sum. But since that leads to a huge amount of comparisons the complexity turns out to be n square in that case and the program will give time limit exceeded error. So we can use memoization in that technique and lower down the complexity to O of m into n where m is the sum that we need to find and n is the number of variables. We will see a dynamic programming technique in this video. So in order to find the sum, we'll have a boolean array which will hold if the sum is possible or not. The dp of 0 will always be true. We can have a sum 0 in any case. Now we will loop on all the values of the array. Now comes the logic part. In order to get to the sum, we should have a sum which is sum minus i already in place into this array. If we do not have any value which is sum minus i in place, we cannot reach sum. That is a basic mathematics. So we will start from sum and go till the current value. Now the sum at dp of j is possible only if there exist already the dp of j was true or there exists a sum which is equals to j minus the current value. If j minus i exists only then we add i into it it will give us j. At the end we simply return the value which is present at dp of sum. So if the value is true the sum is possible if it not then it is not possible. When we run this code we get the right result for second. Now let's run for first. So it is giving the right result. Let's submit this code. So the code got submitted successfully. The time complexity as we can see is n for this and sum for this which we will denote as m. So the time complexity becomes O of m into n and the space complexity as we are using a dp array it is O of m. Thanks for watching the video. See you in the next one.